So hi everyone, welcome to this session on automating Unity mobile applications using Appium and Poco Air Test. Today's demo will be led by none other than Sushant Nandan, who is a lead asset at Play Games 24/7. With over 10 years of experience in building and executing advanced test automation frameworks, Sushant is truly an expert in the field, and we are thrilled to have him with us today. Thanks, Sudan. Thanks for the brief introduction. So, hi. Hi everyone. Good morning. Okay. Uh, today in this demo, I'll be presenting on how to automate an Unity application using APM and Poco Air Test. So, so before that, I'll just introduce myself. I am Shushant, working as an estate lead in Games Twenty Four Cross Seven. I have around ten years of experience in software testing with a strong background in uh, automation for both front end and back end applications. And also, I'm very passionate about learning some new technologies, tools. And I love to travel a lot. This is like a short reduction about myself. Let's quickly jump on to the demo. So in today's session, we'll be covering about what is Unity, why we need automation on Unity or Unity applications, what are the challenges faced in automation, and what are the benefits of automating game application. And what is Poco Air Test, and how using Poco Air Test we will be we are able to achieve Unity automation, and at last finally a demo on real time application which is Rummy Circle will cover an end to end scenario, automating the Unity layer of the application. Okay, so now uh, what is Unity? So Unity is a game engine. It's a popular game engine. It's an open source developed by Unity, Tech Unity Technologies. It used to create real-time 3D games, 2D games, and some interactive applications. It's mainly used for game development, but it is also used in other industries like films, some creating some animations and visualizations. So it uses a graphic game objects. So the Overall, the Unity application itself is complex to test. So the automation is really challenging for Unity applications. So we all know that uh, compared to normal automation, game automation is uh, really critical and also it's complex because Unity involves some dynamic elements and complex graphics involved. So automatic uh, Unity application is tricky. But in you know that in today's world, Automation is really essential because the applications keeps evolving and new things keeps adding on to the application. So with traditional functional testing and doing manually, it will take a lot of time to test a feature. And it is really challenging to test all the scenarios. So that's where automation comes into picture uh, with respect to game automation. So to uh, image recognition is one of the option, but it occupies a lot of space and also it is not very reliable because the images can keep changing on your application it is, and it, it cannot interact properly for different screen resolution so it is not a very reliable solution so to address this issue we identified a tool called poco so poco is a cross engine ui automation framework so which can be integrated with apm so along with apm we can use poco to get the UA hierarchy of the screen game elements and using APM touch capabilities, we can perform actions on the elements. We created a POCO driver, which is an integration of APM and POCO elements. Now, this integration significantly enhances the efficiency of writing automation. So APM uh, can interact with your applications. It can um, perform all actions, but it is supports only for native applications. The limitations of APM is it is not able to interact with game application, which is built using some game engines like Unity or Cocos or Unreal. These are all different game engines. So with APM, we are not able to interact with game GUI elements. So that is one of the challenging we face in automation in, in any mobile application where Unity is involved. We will not be able to automate the end-to-end -end scenarios because APM doesn't have the capability to uh, interact with game objects, which is very custom and it, it keeps changing. That's where POCO comes into picture. So using POCO, like POCO provides an SDK where you can integrate with your application and by it launches a POCO agent on your game engine. 
so you can communicate through tcp connection and you can um, get the page source and you can interact using the api it's also a record and playback tool where you can just record and write play some uh, writing some simple scripts and also it provides an inspector same like apm inspector it's a poco inspector where you can inspect on poco elements basically the unity objects and to uh, identify or locate any elements in the game objects or in the mobile so it is mainly used by uh, gaming testers for identifying the unity objects now what is poco so poco is a cross engine automation framework so it supports multiple game engines as i said like it supports unity cocos and real a uh, different game engines and it is uh, works on python only it, it is compatible with both python 2 and python 3.0 so it also sub, uh, provides a simple api which is uh, unified across multiple platforms so using those apis you can interact with your application do some actions like click or get the text or check for the element is present all these actions you can perf uh, perform using poco so poco is nothing but it's similar to any task framework for apps like uh, ui automator for android similar way poco is more for uh, unity objects so poco gets the page source from um by making a rpc connection to your game engine now we'll see what is ad test poco and ad test more more or less it's similar but the approach is different poco it's more on ui hierarchy it's element based automation it will look for identifying the elements in the ui it is it recognizes the image and using the coordinates it's click on the image so it is based on image recognition and it, it also provides multiple platforms um it supports uh, platforms like android ios windows etc so now let me show you add test id and how you can interact with any uh, game objects so this is an artist ID. This is so it looks. It's an open source. You can download it from the Google. So once you open the artist ID, you can either connect your device, which is a physical device, through USB and enabling the debug option, or you can connect any device which is in the remote server. So I'll just show you how you can connect a device which is in remote. So here we have a remote connection option. So let's say. I want to connect to this device, which is remote through remote. So just copy this option. Click on connect. It will make a connection to this device. So in the left side, you can see there is a Poco assistant. So here, based on your game engine you can select which game engine your application is developed with so in my case uh, the rummy application is developed using cocos in the beginning now we are transitioned from cocos to unity so i'll select unity so once you select unity you can see the complete hierarchy of the uh, dom which is nothing but the particular screen dom of the screen it's similar like uh, what we see in apm inspector where you will able to see the complete uh, dom of the screen where you can locate the elements to fetch the locator. Similar way in POCO also, we have POCO inspector. If you want to inspect, you can click on POCO inspector, click on a particular element which you want to inspect. Yeah. Just give a second, it's loading. Yeah. inspect the elements using this like let's say if i want to click on this points from me so you can also get the text of the element so poco basically identifies the element based on the name of the using name attribute so you can use this poco inspector for identifying locators or writing your test scripts managing your uh, all the locators by using this poco inspector and it also provides a cool features like record and play, but, but we are not going to talk much about it, but you can play around it. It, it records your, uh, whatever actions you do on this, um, 
mobile of screen it will record all this options and you can play back so we explored like poco artist so once we integrate the poco sdk we can get the hierarchy of the um, unity layer or one more thing i would like to add this uh, using add test it's not only inspecting uh, poco game engine or any different game engine but it, it is also used to inspect the native layer like how apm inspector works we're using uh, add test we can also inspect the normal uh, android native elements like you can open a settings or any calculator even it, it can show the dom of it now what we have done in our apm framework uh, we have integrated this poco so the, there are some five steps for that. First is we need to integrate Poco SDK in our Unity or Cocos application. So this is very simple and straightforward. So Poco SDK is available in the GitHub, GitHub repository, which is open source. At the end of the slide, I've also shared the reference links where you can go to the GitHub link. It's very simple. Just it take hardly five minutes. So you engine. Once you download, you can add those components in your a game engine while building that so it instruments your application which helps you to get the complete ui hierarchy of the game engine now second is add rpc functions in unity in our case like we added some rpc functions since it's uh ours is a game application it's rummy so if we want to interact with the game table or the cards to fix the cards if there are multiple tables in rummy application if you want to fetch the inline cards of table one or table two so there are some RPC functions written in Unity. So once Poco Server's connection is established, then by calling that RPC function, you can get the particular desired uh, results. Third one is installation of Poco UI in artist libraries. So first you need to have Python installed either Python 2.0 or 3.0 once you install. So this is nothing but like now with installation of Poco UI in artist, you can able to interact with only one device simultaneously but when you're running in a uh, parallel execution if you if your automation wants it's running on parallel and with multiple test cases and if you want to get the hierarchy of the screen from different devices what we do we have added on logic we added some custom parameters in the actors runner file so basically what it does it used to, at runtime will be passing the device ip so it will used to render uh, retrieve the page source of the particular device so when multiple devices are running in parallel, so each device IP will be passed to this uh, Poco artist in the command line. So it will retrieve the page source of that particular uh, device. That is step number four. The fifth one is creation of artist files. So artist files, nothing but like we have to create an artist file. Artist file is nothing but a Python file. You create a Python file. That Python file is not, nothing but it used to retrieve the DOM of your application. I'll show you that quickly. So this is the artist file this to get the DOM of your application. So if you see, this is the command we pass. So Python, what is the module? It's artist run command where the file is located. And we are passing an argument. Iphone, Iphone, this is the syntax. So you have to, if you want to pass any device ID at runtime, you can use this command hyphen hyphen device, the IP address of the device and 5001. 5001 is nothing but the Poco server running on that device so that it's listening on the target device. So it's 5001. It can be anything, whatever, when, when you integrate SDK, what, what is the port you have given? The same port has to be, port has to be given here. So when I run this command, let me show you that. So it returns you the complete uh, DOM page source of all the Unity elements in JSON format. So let's say if I want to get the DOM, so now this is a Unity layer. If I want to get the DOM of this particular screen, I have to pass the IP address. So to get the IP address of the device using ADB command, you can do that. So this is a command for getting the IP address, device IP address. So 192.168.114.150. So you have to pass this in your command line. See, this returns you the, I am printing this just for uh, demo purpose so this will return you the complete dom so now what we are doing in automation we are just retrieving this dom and we are storing it now the, with this dom we are uh, able to identify the particular element by passing the locator okay 
okay so these are the five steps we are doing it for setting up unity automation in our apm framework so this this is the changes i added that piece of code what changes has to be more done in the runner file to uh, allow custom parameters custom parameters is nothing but that device id is to be passed at runtime so in this runner file you have to in the setup class you have to replace this uh, add this particular piece of code and in um, settings class you have to add a variable rc device so at runtime this rc device will be um, stored with device information whatever device ip you have passed it will be stored with device information and in the framework we have also added two class same like apm driver we have created one poco driver class so what this poco driver does it communicates with your unity application where your poco agent is running on so we have written some methods like how we have find elements by id xpath name in apm so we also written similar methods like find element by id find elements by id and wait for poco element so what this find element by id does once we ret uh, retrieve the page source if uh, we pass a argument to this method the locator which we want to identify so it passes the complete json it identifies the locator and it stores in a map which the locator along with the attributes whatever the attributes contain the locator element the, uh, basically the uh, node element can contain list of attributes so this is the attribute basically each element will have list of attributes like a name position all the anchor points clickable all this so this complete uh, thing we are storing it in a hash map in the framework now the poke element class this poke once we identify the locator so we want to do some actions on it either it could be click or to get the text or verify whether the element is displayed so we have written some uh, generic functions like click get text displayed to do some actions of it now i'll show you a live demo of it how we are using the poco in our rummy application so this is a framework So I have written a simple script where it will log into the application. So uh, before that, I'll just give a, a quick idea about our Rummy application. So Rummy it's a polyglot application where login is an Android layer. And once you log in the lobby, web layer. So it can our application consists of multiple layers. So for this automation, uh, we need APM along with at I mean Poco. Because uh, we have Unity screens, once you log in, there are multiple screens which is developed using Unity. So that is where Artis comes into picture, where it will be able to get the ident look, I mean, page source and using the page source, we identify the locators and we perform actions on it. For login, we use again APM driver to uh, perform actions on the log login screen. And for WebView also, as APM supports WebView, it we will switch to WebView. Basically, we do driver dot switch to context. So once it switch to WebView, it will get the WebView elements and it can able to interact with it. So I'll just quickly run this execution. I'll show the how the in, in interaction is happening and how the end to end flow works. I'll run it in a debug mode. So so that I can show you the how the navigations are happening. I'm running, I'm going to run on this device so I'll keep both screens so that you know. 
just bad for a minute. So it does all the preset apps. So it takes a few seconds to launch the app. Okay, uh, Sushant, while this is coming up, we have one question from Pratik. Um, is the usability of Poco Airtest limited to only Unity apps? No, Pratik. So as I told in the starting, so Poco supports multiple game engines. So that is a specialty of Poco. So in our case also, our Rami was initially developed using Coco's game engine. Later, we transitioned from Coco's to Unity. So to answer this, it supports multiple game engines. It supports Coco, Poco, and Unreal. So the main reason why we choose Poco is, and we were able to transition from Coco to Unity very smoothly. There were not major rework in our framework because earlier we was using Poco to interact with it. So only the SDKs will be different. Each game engine will have their own SDK. So when it is Coco, the Poco, uh, Coco's SDK has to be integrated with the game. So when it is Unity, you have to change your SDK. That's all. But the framework level remains the same. The APIs will remain the same. So the maintenance is easy when it when you use this Poco. So the app is launched now. It's a Rami app. So our login and registration screen is of Android layer. So for that, we use APM to log in with. Once it's logged in the lobby, it's a unity layer. So this application, it's developed using multiple layers like native, unity and web view. So now once the lo lobby is loaded, all these are unity layers. So for interacting with unity layers, now we make a communication to Poco. So let's say now I want to click on cash games. I'll show you how the interaction happens. So now it will make a connection to Poco. So it will call the Poco driver class. I'll keep a breakpoint here to show you how it works. And before it makes a Unity call. So the Unity call is nothing but what I showed you in the Python. Like it makes a call to this Poco to get the JSON elements in JSON format. So Poco elements in JSON format. So you see the response, it, it drives a complete page source in JSON format. Now, once we receive the page source, we want to identify our locator. So in our case, locator is cache game. So it has to identify the cache games element in this. So here, the search element for JSON, we have written a simple JSON passing mechanism here in this function. So it will pass this complete JSON, it will identify the poke element. Once it this um, passing is done, we were we verifying whether the element is displayed or not. We are retrying it 
two to three times to check whether the element is identified. Once it is identified, it will come out of the loop. Now we have the poke element identified. This element will have all the attributes of it, like uh, the position and everything. Now with that position, we are calculating the coordinates. We have the positions. If you see this coming back to the add test, each element has its position with X and Y coordinates. Now what um, APM does, what in automation framework we are doing with the screen resolution of the device, multiplying this coordinates X and Y with the screen within screen height. So it will give you the coordinates where this element is located. After that, we are using APM actions class to tap on it. I'll also show you that. Where it is doing it. Okay, I'll keep a break point here. Too. So now this is what I was talking about. So this get coordinates based on device. What will do this element? It's a hash map of it. So this hash map contains whatever we see in the add test ID, all the attributes of that element. So now we mainly needed this position attribute. I mean key value pair. So with this position, it will get calculate the coordinates for that particular element. So now we get the screen coordinates from this method the screen coordinates are it has to click on this particular x and y coordinates 499 and 488 so on this device it will click on that particular coordinates using apm action plus so this is where the integration between apm and pocos are happening so for poco is just to get the page source and from the page source we calculate the coordinates once the coordinates are calculated for the element we are using a apm actions class to tap on the coordinates so in line 92 if you see I'm using actions class to tap on this coordinates 502 and 486. So it will tap on cache games. See, it tapped on cache games. Okay, now I can remove that um, breakpoint. I just kept it to show you how it, the interaction, the navigation is happening in the framework. So now this user, it, user will be launched on game table and he'll do a add cache from the game table. That's one end to end flow we are automating. So user launch, launch, uh, logged into lobby and he's logging, I mean, clicking on cache games and land, landing on a game table. Once he lands on a game table, he'll do an add cache. So this is one real time scenario user is doing. Now it clicked on add cash button. It want to change the payment mode from credit to net banking. So that action will happen. So this is a web view layer. So now the from APM native to web view action, I mean, switch would have been performed. Now after then we are doing add cash here. So I kept a breakpoint here too. So let me, it's checking whether the element button is present. So this is a stage app. So just we have mocked this at caching part. So it will just It's entering the credentials for completing the transactions. So once that is done, it will receive a thank you page. So that's the end of the scenario. So one end to end flow, we try to automate using both APM and focus. Now the transactions completed successfully. Once that is done, if the execution will be completed. It will capture all the logs and video. 
So the exhibition is completed. You can see that it passed. Yeah, so that you can see that it's one day test case has been executed and it's passed. Actually, there are also other few tools available in the market. Along with POCO, there are also tools like Altunity. And, but what is the main difference between Altunity and POCO artists? So Altunity is specifically designed only for Unity applications. But in case of POCO, it supports multiple game engines. And Altunity is based on WebSocket connection. And POCO, it's very simple and lightweight, uses simple RPC uh, communication protocol. It's just a request and response. So whenever you need it, you will make a uh, POCO communication to the POCO agent. So it retrieves the page source. That's all. And nextly, the in Altunity, there will be performance over it because it is com in POCO, you don't have much dependency on the game code. So it can act independently. But in Altunity, you have to uh, the maintenance is little more in Altunity. And the main reason we choose POCO is because as I told, like we were migrating, initially we were using COCO as a game engine, then POCO, uh, we shifted to Unity. So the our migration was easier when we are use, when we are using POCOs. That is one main reason. Yeah, that's it. So I can just re quickly recap what we discussed in this complete session. We discussed what is Unity and why we need to automate mobile game applications, what are the challenges automating mobile game applications using APM and how did we overcome that using POCO artist and how do you, did we set up POCO artist in our framework to integrate with APM and we also show, seen a demo of live application using POCO and APM, how you will able to communicate and perform end-to-end -end automation. Yeah, that's it. Wow, this was really insightful. Thanks a lot, uh, Sushant, for sharing your insights. Um, we have a couple of questions in the Q&A. Um, so I got a question that Sushant, you were saying that we need to have POCO SDK to our app for running automation. So can it be run on the actual app that will push on Play Store or App Store? Uh, so Shubha, ready to answer this question. So POCO SDK, we are, it has to be integrated with your actual app game app so that it can instrument your code it, it can't be from like a play store or some external third party and the next question is is the automation here fast enough that used for quick action that need to be done during gameplay yeah definitely why both so this uh poco is really fast compared to any other automation tool which we have observed we are using it for last um couple of months 